Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to hopefully resolve an issue on your Windows 10 or Windows 11 computer that reads that the system cannot contact a domain controller to service the authentication request. Please try again later. So this should hopefully be a pretty straightforward process here, guys. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So a few of the most common causes for an error like this would be that the domain controller happens to be offline, either due to a power outage or maintenance. There also may be network issues if the client device is not correctly configured to establish communication with the domain controller, or again, if there are issues with the network. You can also have issues if the domain controller is located within a virtual machine and it may be suspended or the system is just not turned on or powered up. So pretty straightforward process here, guys. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So first thing we're going to do is open up the search menu, type in CMD, best match, or come back with command prompt, right click on that and select run as administrator. If you receive a user account control prompt, select yes. And now into this elevated command line window, you want to type in ipconfig followed by a space forward slash flush DNS. Flush DNS should all be one word attached to that forward slash out front. Hit enter on the keyboard. Should come back a Windows IP configuration successfully flushed the DNS resolver cache. Now you want to type in NETSH space WinSock, W-I-N-S-O-C-K space reset. Once again, exactly how you see it on my screen and hit enter. Successfully reset the WinSock catalog. You must restart the computer in order to complete the reset. So at this point, go ahead and close out of here and you want to restart your computer. And then hopefully at this point your issue has been resolved. Something else we could try here as well if you're trying to force a domain controller authentication or specifically a client device to validate its logon against a specified domain controller. You can open up the search menu and type in regedit, R-E-G-E-D-I-T. Best result should come back with registry editor. Go ahead and right click on that and select run as administrator. If you receive a user account control prompt, select yes. And before you proceed in the registry, I would highly suggest you create a backup of it. So if anything were to go wrong, you could easily restore it back. In order to create a backup, it's very simple. All you have to do is select file and then export. File name, I recommend naming it the date in which you're making the backup. Set export range to all and then save it to a convenient and easily accessible location on your computer. And then once you've done that, we're ready to begin. And we're gonna start by double clicking on the H key local machine folder. Do the same thing for the system folder, so double click on that. Should be a current control set folder in here. Double click on that one as well. Double click on services. And now you wanna go down to a folder that says NetBT. So I can just click on a random key in here and just type in NetBT. That's just a quicker way to jump to it. Double click on NetBT. And now there should be parameters key under here. So just go ahead and left click on that one time. If you need to pause the video and take note of our file path, you can see it up at the top of the screen here. Each backslash is a different sub key that we've gone under to get to this point. So now directing our attention over to the right panel, you want to locate a value that says enable LM host. You see this value right here. If you do not see this value in this list, you'll have to create it. In order to do so, you would right click in a blank area, select new, and then do a 32-bit value. You enable, enable LM host. Again, it's a plural host. So once you have that value, double click on it. Set the value data to the numerical value of one. So if there's a zero in there, delete it, type the number one, set base to hexadecimal, and then select OK. And then once that is done, you want to close out of the registry editor at this point. And then you will need to restart your computer in order for the changes to be applied. So go ahead and restart your computer now.
So there you go, guys. Hopefully that was a pretty straightforward process. And as always, thank you for watching. I do hope I was able to help you out, and I do look forward to catching you all in the next tutorial. Goodbye.